78% of all Fortnite players are on controller. And while there are a couple players making it to the top level of Fortnite from controller, in most FNCS finals we have a maximum of 10 controller players out of the 100. And anyone can see this does not work with the numbers. So if it's so hard to become a good controller player, how can you become a GOAT controller player in 2023? I have 5 things today to help you increase the likelihood of you getting to that legendary grand finals in FNCS as a controller player. If you want controller players to get more recognition, type controller players on top in the comments section and I'll like and heart every single one. Let's get right into it. Having the right sensitivity to your controller is a very important thing. Most of the time people are either too slow or too fast. If you're too slow, you're going to be editing out of doors, you're going to be struggling to turn around in the box, but you're going to have better aim. If you're too fast, you're probably going to have terrible aim and you're going to have really flicky mechanics. You need to be neither too quick or too fast. You need fast enough to pull quick builds out, but also slow enough to hit your shots. I used to play high sense, which made me flicky. I then lowered my sense, an example of a good sense is 35-35 look, 1.8 build, 1.6 edit, and 9% 9% aim. A lower edit than build means more consistency in your edits and slightly more flickiness in your builds, which is what you want. Optimal binds. People say this a lot for keyboard and mouse players. Having optimal binds is what makes it good. Now this is also true for controller. Controller doesn't have as many buttons. If a keyboard and mouse player has bad binds, they at least have a lot of buttons they can change it to. Controller players have a limited amount. I recommend any changes to your binds if you have the ability to. For example, switching to as many paddles as you have access to. If you have access to paddles, if you're lucky enough to have that, you should be switching to as many paddles as you have. I personally play on four paddles and it has made my gameplay so much better. The four paddles means I never have to touch my four buttons X, A, B and Y, as these are the buttons I put as the paddles. It makes my gameplay so much more smoother and I don't know where I'd be without them. If you don't have the luxury of paddles, I think you could switch to Claw. Claw makes it easier to push them buttons and mean that you're less flicky and less stiff with your analog stick. I personally believe for controller in terms of binds, that left stick is the best option for edit as it allows quick edits and again you don't have to take your finger off the stick to activate it. I would recommend right button for reset builds as it's quite easy to get to and you're not going to get in the way. It's also a lot faster to press than the right analog stick which is what the default setting is. The third tip I have for you today is edit and reset on release. This is a new setting we added in the last season and it changes Fortnite forever for controller players. Keyboard and mouse players used to have the massive advantage of being able to reset walls and builds instantly with something we call scroll wheel reset. Controllers now have the equivalent of scroll wheel reset. It's only very slightly worse and honestly it doesn't make too much of a difference compared to what keyboard and mouse players have. This is why I recommend having your reset button on your right bumper and having your edit on your left Stick. If you have an edit on release and reset, it means that when you edit the builds, as soon as you let go, it's going to edit and on the reset, as soon as you press the reset button, it is going to reset the build. It is super fast and it means your mechanics should be feeling crispy. The fourth tip I have for you is to lower your dead zones very slightly. Not too much. The important thing is not to go too low as if you go too low, you're going to end up having a bit of stick drift. You need to be high enough to keep up the stick drift, but also low enough so you feel nice and controlled. If you have two or higher dead zones, you're going to have to put a lot more pressure on the sticks to get the character to move. This is bad for competitive gameplay where you need to be on the ball and be able to move with milliseconds to spare. That's why I recommend lowering them. Lots of controller players like Miro and Day became the best as they had the confidence. They didn't overbuild in their fights. That is a common misconception in Fortnite that you have to be flashy to win these fights. You only have to do what's necessary to win the fights and I learned this the hard way. Having been really flashy for a couple seasons, I was really struggling with my fighting but it's now getting back on track after I learned to not overdo it. Most fights can be finished with even the basic of safe peaks, even against really good players. One bonus tip I have for you today on controller is control freaks. Two words, control freaks. These things change my life on controller and I'm pretty sure they'll change yours. It's not sponsored by them in any way, but this product is amazing. They attach themselves to your analog sticks and they give you an excess range of movement which means that you have more precision with your aim, you have more precision with your edits. Every single person I've recommended to has said they've changed their experience on controller and I reckon they could change your guys' experiences too. Soon you guys are going to be up there with the pros. Speaking of pros, this video is going to show you what the pros have that you don't, so go give it a watch. It's a banger, trust me. 